Hey everyone, Blitz of the Reich here. Um, I'm making a quick video before I go off in a, to a trip in Italy that I'm going for a few for a week. Uh, wanted to make an update before I leave. Um, so recently I saw TIK, the Imperator Knights video on National Socialism, and it got a lot of flack, uh, particularly from. Uh, mainly Marxists, Marxist-Leninists, and uh, I wanted to put, give my input because I feel like he didn't really define socialism, which was a bit of a mistake. Uh, some of the things I don't agree with him in the video, but at the same time, I don't really agree with the other perspective of a lot of the people complaining to him saying, oh, you're not a political scientist, don't... Say stay away from political theory. I feel it's a bit harsh coming mainly a bit hypocritical coming mainly from these people. And I know a couple of them watch this channel. I'm not trying to point fingers or anything. I'm just saying. So I wanted to point out uh, they get fascism wrong. <clears throat> a lot of uh, Marxists uh, tend to view fascism from the imperialist lens, the capitalist lens. And that refutes almost the point of the entire doctrine of fascism. Um, they rightly point to a couple of business interests and pressure groups like IG Farben um, and Krupp Steel. But this didn't really originate with the National Socialist Party. And that only came after they really attained electoral success in the 1930 elections. So before that, very little interest, uh, business interest was actually involved in the National Socialists, especially being that they resented capitalism as much as they did um, communists. But for strange, for different reasons, a lot of people, when they analyze these 19th century ideologies with 20th century ideologies, they don't realize that there are certain similarities. Um, fascism in its core and National Socialism hates the French Revolution. Uh, the ideas of liberalism sprouted from that revolution. The ideas almost of communism, of socialism, of egalitarianism, uh, anti-statism in a way, sprouted from this revolution. And fascism, what it is, it is statism, extreme statism in the Italian definition, and in the Nazi National Socialist definition, it's statism combined with racialism, biological racism. Um, I'd call Italian fascism extreme civic nationalism because, for example, Mussolini made comments that uh, since the Roman times, there were Jews that were um, that were proud Italian citizens, almost like a meritocracy like if you show that your devotion to the state um you are part of the state you be you become part of the group um it's an ideology that really steers clear from the positive economic analysis of both liberalism and marxism or socialism as you call it um fascists and national socialists don't really look at history as like an economic progression or an e economic analysis of uh, you know the marxists and the socialists use the term class struggle and they the way they analyze markets um you know powers be uh, competing with competing markets uh, that's the way for example lenin and his cohort analyzed the first world war a, a war of annexation um however to fash and, and to liberals They'll see like, oh, if we liberalize, privatize, blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying that's an accurate definition, but you get the point. They, they, if we do that, then the economy is good. So liberalism and socialism and their core values come from a positively economic analysis. And that's something that national socialism and fascism hate. Um, but that doesn't mean that there aren't similarities between fascism and socialism, especially the brand of Marxism. Uh, for example, fascism, when it, not National Socialism, when it took power in, 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 the, in the 1930s um, and late 20s, they did institute um, party structures of the, the National Socialist Party, 
uh, from, for example, I have it right here, the Austrian Christian Socialist Party. They took uh, elements of the blocks and cells structure from the Communist uh, Party. Um, I'm not really sure what the blocks and cells is. That's what my source states. But they definitely took other elements. Um, I'll be very honest about that. <laughs> my source here is uh, a book from uh, the 1980s. Uh, but it is a very good uh, overarching analysis because it includes a guide a guide to the literature and it talks about a lot about uh, the common turns um, theory of how fascists um, gain power so that also negates the fact that the communists and the socialists in germany themselves were kind of fighting each other a lot the kpd and the spd were fighting each other so much they were worried about each other so much that they kind of ignored the Nazi rise to power. And I had an interview with a professor, Richard Tempest, who kind of also mentioned that. So that's something that um, Marxists don't really like and socialists don't really talk about. They really like to pin it on like almost a conspiratorial premise that, oh, uh, the Nazis were inherently part of the business class. And yeah, sure, you could you can argue that, but you could there are so many contradictions in socialist and marxist circles as well which is why i don't think uh the criticism the way they're being portrayed on tik's videos are completely warranted especially coming from people who are like oh um uh just because uh nazism has elements of uh, social programs and stuff doesn't make it socialist and that's <laughs> that's true but they also start viewing fas uh, Nazism and fascism through a capitalist lens, a liberal lens, and they also kind of uh, kind of ignore that their own ideology or their own uh, the own people that kind of like Lenin uh, wanted a junk a, a war. They wanted to structure the um, economy like the German war economy in World War One, the Junkers economy, which was state capitalism in effect. And the NEP, people can say, oh yes, that was only temporary. But I mean, there was a large camp within the Bolshevik party that was actually quite content with the NEP, thought it was working, and they wanted to prolong it. You know, uh, Bukharin is an example. At first, he was against uh, state capitalism. He thought, it gave too much power um, to the state, a monopoly to the state. Um, I believe that's what you call negative capitalism um, in uh, Soviet circles. But um, he then became a defender of the kulaks. So that's a very interesting uh, point. Um, so in that sense, the historical positive analysis is complete and inherent. Fascism, in a sense, it's a very, the most humanistic and I'm not saying that in a positive way. It views history in a very, almost a much more artsy and less rigid way than uh, liberalism and Marxism view. Because socialism, when we're talking about socialism, a lot of people refer to Marxism, uh, which is generally the case. Um, even though in socialism you have the evolutionary structure of feudalism, capitalism, uh, socialism and then which is a transitory period between capitalism and communism but even then uh, Marx was very iffy on this um, for example in Russia he wrote a letter to Vera Zazuslik which was the Marxist intele intellectual that uh, escaped uh, Russia because um, her her sentence was uh, repudiated repudiated when uh, she in tried to assassinate the governor general of St. Petersburg. Uh, she became, she was in, found innocent, but after Alexander II died, um, it was uh, the sentence uh, was annulled, meaning that she could be rearrested and retried. So she went, I believe, to Switzerland, and she wrote him a lot. Um, and she asked him the question, Can Ru does Russia have to go from feudalism to capitalism, then socialism, or can it jump from feudalism? to socialism and Marx pretty much said yes it could jump from feudalism to socialism uh, via the peasant commune uh, and he explained all his mumbo-jumbo in the letter I have the letter actually somewhere here 
if anybody wants the direct source. So it shows that there there isn't really um this view, especially since TIK presented it um, in the video of, of slapping it. It's it's not really fuzz that concrete, even though the, the, the Marxists try to explain socialism and society in scientific and mechanistic form, which is why you have the neo-Marxists today trying to give a more humanistic, less economically positive analysis which actually has some inherent uh, similarities with fascism in that regard. Uh, they're both collectivist ideologies, um, um, which started with uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Uh, socialism and communism seem to be more inclined on the idea that about the noble sa savage and that human men are inherently good, professed by Rousseau. Um, uh, fascism it seems to argue more on the point of the general will, you know, Rousseau's general will, but there's a bit of commonality in the collectivist nature that we have societies thinking of the whole. Socialism with the idea of um, common ownership um, and fascism with the idea that um, the state is the supreme being. So in that sense, there are elements of uh, coercion, you know, because yes, people can point that we've never had a properly communist, a properly socialist, what, what cop communist society, except the Paris Commune of 1871. But that's a bit of a flimsical point because that took place during like a war, anarchy was spread out, and it, it, it didn't function properly like a society. Because if it was truly like a, if it truly would have worked, it would have uh, garnered support, but it would the lack of mobilization is what which is is why the national guard in the peasant commune in paris um completely was eradicated by the french uh, army um but i mean it, it is true that we've not attained communism uh very few countries have been able to implement uh marx's strict interpretations but it's very difficult and what my point with this video is that marxism is riddled in a bunch of internal contradictions that almost make it no different to fascism and why um, I feel like a lot of the criticisms are coming from people who, in a sense, are either very selective about what they're talking about or don't know what they're talking about. Because, like, sure, you could read Das Kapital and you'll think you're an expert on Marx, but he's a lot more subtle than that. So in to conclude this video... Marxism has a more scientific, mechanistic, evolutionary approach to viewing how the economic changes in society, how they change. Uh, liberalism also views society via economic uh, analysis, almost quantitative analysis, I'd say. Fascism, in its sense, is qualitative in that it rejects um, the positive economic uh, thinking of the 19th century. It is a status ideology that can go through the si extreme civic nationalist uh, interpretation of Mussolini or the ra biologically racist interpretation of Hitler. Uh, but they did take elements. State capitalism was prevalent in both economies. But at the same time, uh, I mean, Lenin and his, his group envisaged um, the Soviet state to function that way. I mean, you have to remember that um, there's so many different camps in socialism that argue uh, whether the transition into socialism should be done through democratic forces like the legal Marxists and the other socialists or it should be done more forcefully, uh, which are the Marxist-Leninists. Um, so... In that case, there's it, it, it's you're beating a, a dead horse at this point uh, because people go like, yes, you, you can um, define socialism, but a lot of those same people don't seem to know how to define socialism because they're all arguing based on uh, different values. Like a, 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 a Marxist-Leninist can tell you uh, oh yeah, the proletariat, uh, anti-democratic nature, blah, 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 blah. I mean, 
excuse me, he did annul the results of the Constituent Assembly in 1918. So, uh, very democratic of him, you know, and he only, uh, <laughs> he only liked so the power of the Soviet local councils when it was convenient to him, but, uh, I digress. Um, or you could be, uh, like a Marxist-Leninist, like, um, Bug- Bugadin, I think is the name, or the Mensheviks, you know, who pretty much wanted to take a more legal, democratic, parliamentary approach to socialism, which is technically what the Labor Party did after World War Two. I mean, the Labor Party is in fact uh i would they're definitely socialist but i don't know if i'd correctly label them as democratic socialists or social democrats of the old order but definitely nonetheless uh, the labor party did have that idea that um we could transition to so uh, to socialism but through democratic means so it's very complicated and i want to stress that and i'm defending tik but with reservations particularly because he said he pretty much did the mistake of pinning fascism on the evolutionary time scale of marxism when fascists and fascists didn't believe that at all they they thought like uh any century can have any ideology it wants pretty much it's not like feudalism capital it's not like a a level you know level game you know you don't go from level one to level two like it's fascists and and liberals also kind of think that in a way like for example francis fukuyama uh he thought he thinks that liberal democracies are the final form of government so fascists they were just more like oh this is the century of fascism this is a century of absolutism this is a century of capitalism boom that's it no need. So they had an incredible disdain of economic of economic analysis, which is why it's quite difficult for Marxists and capitalists to wrap their head around this ideology ideology and say, "Oh, which are you?" Because of the fact that they pretty much go with the flow with whatever works. Fascists, in in a way, are pragmatists in that. Uh, they would, wouldn't mind state intervention. They wouldn't mind uh, privatization to a degree, private property to a degree. But it is true that they see uh, capitalism as inhumane. You know, they, This is why capitalism, fascism, and socialism share a lot in common, a lot more than we think. Um, Marx, for example... And sorry for the background. And for example, Adam Smith talk about the. Um, I have it somewhere in my head. They they, they talk about how the 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 work of of uh, of industrialization numbs the mind, and is mental mutilation. That's I think that's a term that Adam Smith gives. And in the same time, the fascists kind of get that analysis in a way so i hope this video kind of clarifies things um it's not my usually documentary usual documentary video but i felt like um i needed to explain uh and give my take on it um on what's going on here so i hope you all have a great day and please uh discuss in the comments i know i'll probably get some uh constructive criticism i don't mind that um and if any of you would like my sources i uh i try to uh diversify if you know what i mean <laughs> see ya